You're listening to OTR FM, part of the IOM Radio Network. So, I guess we're on the air <laughs> on OTR FM. Hello, everybody. So, here's what's going on. If you're listening on the new OTR FM, uh, you are listening to Matt Connerton Unleashed. And the reason we're on the air late is because at the top of the show, uh, when I was supposed to start my show, there was music playing. Uh, I also broadcast on IPM Nation 1 and started the show there because I couldn't get on the air here. But sounds like it's working now. So I guess we'll go ahead and finish the show on both networks. So welcome to the show in progress, OTR FM. Uh, for the record, this is not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, uh, I, I go to do the show at the beginning of the show, and there's music playing, and I don't know why, but it's nothing I'm doing here. It's something wrong at the network, so hopefully that gets sorted out because this is the second time in two weeks that it's happened. So uh, those of you listening on OTRFM, you missed a great first 15 minutes of the show. But what can I tell you? Uh, we do archive. Uh, well, OTR, uh, they do a great job of archiving the shows at uh, omtimes.com slash IOM. Um, and we also archive them on IPM Nation. And, uh, you know, so if, if you want to go back, if you are listening on OTR FM and you want to go back and hear the, the, the first 15 minutes of the show that you missed, uh, that archive will not be found on Ohm Times because uh, I don't think Ohm Times is going to archive tonight's show because part of it's missing as far as they're concerned. But the full broadcast on IPM Nation will be available at ipmnation.com slash MCU Live, and we'll post it on Facebook and whatnot. So you'll be able to go back and hear what you missed. So welcome, uh, OTR FM audience. To be, I, I said some great stuff I would have loved for you to hear, but... Don't know what to say. Um, okay, uh, so where are we? Um, let's get into some issues. Oh, you missed all my programming notes and stuff, OTRFM audience. Um, Ted Cruz said something today that just struck me. Oh, let me freeze that. Uh, that just struck me as really bizarre. Um. You know, it's – and before I, before I tell you what he said, in case you missed it, I understand that uh, uh, we're in a, a hyper-partisan environment where, you know, there's, a, there's almost a, a weird thing that people do. And, I mean, this has always existed to some degree, but I think it's gotten worse as the polarization between the two parties has gotten worse. Um. They, uh, everybody kind of assumes the worst about their opposition, and and there's a demonization that goes on. Um, Republicans and Democrats are both guilty of it, and uh, you know this sort of hyper partisanship. It's like um, it, it's not enough to just disagree to have policy disagreements, ideological disagreements. Um, Republicans and Democrats will demonize each other. Um, abortion, by the way, is the, the, the easiest example of this. You see this constantly, you know, um, uh, pro-choicers talk about pro-lifers like they're all just a bunch of religious zealots who want to take away your birth control and, 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 you know, c control, uh, your reproductive choices. And, you know, that is a caricature. It's more complicated than that. And they're not all religious zealots and whatnot. I know, I, I know a lot of pro-lifers who, who just, um, you know, they're not necessarily, uh, you know, these holy roller types. They just, they have an opinion. Um, so some of that caricature is unfair. And of course, it also works the other way, as I know, because I myself being pro-choice, I know that a lot of pro-lifers will paint those of us who are pro-choice as just being these sort of amoral, uh, Satan-worshipping baby murderers, um, which of course is also not fair. I am not an amoral, baby murdering, Satan worshiping, bloodlusting, uh, evil person. I'm just I'm pro choice, 
And there are reasons for that. So, you know, so what happens is there's this demonization and caricature that goes on and then both sides end up talking past each other. Um, but sometimes the, the, uh, the partisanship is taken and the demonization is taken to such an absurd level. And this is what Ted Cruz said today. This is from ABC News, uh, dot com. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, some of you, those of you who like Ted Cruz, I'm sure will hear me say this and say, oh, this is the liberal media saying this. Well, once again, uh, this is the liberal media quoting what Ted Cruz literally said. OK, I'm getting really sick of that whole anytime anything anywhere is reported that reflects negatively on a Republican uh Republicans everywhere go, oh, it's the liberal media. Oh, it's not fair. Uh. Um, because it, it just, it, it beca- that also becomes asinine and it's taken to ridiculous extremes. But, okay, so Ted Cruz said, the majority of violent criminals are Democrats. And I heard him say this and I thought, not only is that, take, is that just naked partisanship taken to a ridiculous extreme, and not only will that not help, not that he's going to be the Republican nominee, but if he were to be, you know, I don't know how he's going to win the general election. You got to be able to at least peel off a few people from the other side. What Democrat is going to vote for someone who Ted Cruz would assume they're probably a violent criminal? But uh, but also the other thing I thought is he just completely pulled that out of his ass. There can't possibly be statistical data to back that up. What a bizarre thing to say. Just really bizarre. Um, Let me read this article before we run out of time on this break. Uh, In the wake of Friday's deadly shooting at a Planned Parenthood uh, facility in Colorado, Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz claimed the overwhelming, quote, the overwhelming majority of violent criminals are Democrats, unquote, and that Democrats and media are politicizing the shooting. Uh, Let me stop there for a moment. Anything that happens in the news anywhere is politicized automatically, instantly, immediately by Republicans and Democrats both. That's just how it works. And whenever anyone, a Republican or a Democrat, accuses somebody else of politicizing something that should not be politicized, they themselves are partaking in the political, uh, politicalism. Uh, wow, I can't even, I can usually say this, but I'm, I'm extra tired tonight. Politization. There we go. They themselves are taking part in the politicization. And are being hypocritical because everybody does it. So anyway, the Texas lawmaker was asked about the shooting, which left three dead during a radio interview with Hugh Hewitt on Monday. During the interview, Cruz said he believes Democrats are soft on crime because, quote, an overwhelming majority of violent criminals are Democrats. Now, listen, here's the single and undeniable fact. The overwhelming majority of violent criminals are Democrats. The media doesn't report that. What they report, and there's a reason why the Democrats for years have been viewed as soft on crime, because they go in and they appoint to the bench judges who release violent criminals. They go in and fight to give the right to vote to convicted felons. Why? Because the Democrats know convicted felons tend to vote Democrat, unquote. I have never heard this, read this anywhere, and... If someone can show me statistics, come on. He clearly just pulled this out of his ass. <laughs> what a bizarre thing to say. Uh, there's more. A press secretary for the Texas senator said Cruz wasn't saying all Democrats are felons and was offering the comments in the context of the Colorado spring shooting. By the way, okay, well, let me stop for a second. Uh Okay, so he's not saying all Democrats are felons, so therefore Democrats are supposed to hear something like this and 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 not be bothered, just like um, are undocumented immigrants supposed to hear Trump uh, call them racists and say, oh, well, he's not say, saying that about all of us, so it's okay, we're not offended? What if I were to say uh, to my Republican friends, you know, I have an observation for you. 
I have no empirical data to back this up. It's just something I know. Not all Republicans are racist, but you damn sure better believe that all racists are Republicans. What if I said that? Would that not bother you, my Republican friends? Even though it's probably true. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, this is uh, the, the press secretary's, uh, the rest of the, uh, some of the rest of the statement. Quote, Senator Cruz is making a point that a lot of liberals rush to judgment to pin this on the pro-life movement, and that is completely misguided. He referenced a report that, in fact, a majority of felons register to vote as Democrats, unquote, said Catherine, uh, Catherine Frazier, national press secretary to the Cruz campaign. Quote, an overwhelming amount of felons actually vote as Democrats, and he's pushing back against that narrative that a lot of people want to put on conservatives to blame them for inciting this horrific shooting, unquote. Quote, police have not released a motive in, Calif- in the California Springs case. A rep for the Cruz campaign said the senator was referencing a paper titled Do Voting Rights Notification Laws Increase Ex-Felon Turnout? The study looks at ex-felons voter registration and turnout in three states, North Carolina, New York, and, and New Mexico. In New York, it found most ex-felons registered as Democrats. But importantly, they registered after they were convicted So they were not necessarily registered Democrats at the time they committed their crimes. By the way, side note, since it's been more Democrats who push for allowing convicted felons to vote, that kind of makes sense. Uh, When ABC News asked Cruz about his remarks today, he said that he was engaging in a process that is called reasonable inference. Quote, an inference is actually rational reasoning, which people do all the time, unquote. No, uh, Senator, that's not what you were doing. You were stating something as fact. (laughs) That is clearly a load of BS that you made up. Um, We're going to hit a break. So here's what we're going to do. When we come back, uh, we will finish off with this uh, Ted Cruz article because there is a little bit more to this. And then we'll um, we will uh, we will go on to something else. And uh, what that will be yet, I'm not sure. But we are live. We are live on IPM Nation 1 and on the new OTR-FM. And uh, very, very grateful to be on OTR-FM, by the way. Sorry, uh, because I I do know it brings us a a large audience, and they're good people. So sorry if I was a little bit of a smartass regarding that earlier. I was just frustrated with the tech glitch, which, again, was not my fault. That's on their end, so... Hopefully they figure that out. But anyway, we'll be right back. Don't go away. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Join Elliot Jolish. The Business Therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jollish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jollish Hour. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. 
the Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hey everybody. Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live. It is Tuesday. I forgot to say the date at the top of the show. I just realized that. It's Tuesday, December 1st, 2015. I got to make sure I do that in case um, all this audio ends up in a time capsule or something. As if anyone actually does that. You know, time capsule. All right. So well, let's finish up on this, this Ted Cruz thing. Um. Cruz claimed that elected officials appoint senior Justice Department officials and lawyers who lionize and glorify cop killers. He's just digging himself a deeper ditch here. He said, quote, when elected Democrats push to give felons the right to vote, it is a perfectly rational and reasonable inference to say those Democrats understand that the overwhelming majority of violent criminals vote Democratic, unquote. Ah, uh, really? That's why there are Republicans who push for this, too, by the way. There are libertarians who believe that uh, felons, after they've paid their debt to society, uh, should should have the right to vote. Uh, you know, that's the point of paying your debt to society. You get your rights back afterward because you've paid your debt. Uh, Cruz also told Hewitt the Colorado Springs shooting was fundamentally wrong and the work of a deranged homicidal killer. Oh, good for him taking a bold stance there, acknowledging that that was wrong. Uh, Hewitt asked Cruz about claims made by some that anti-Planned Parenthood rhetoric by conservatives uh, could have inspired the shooting that left three people dead. Cruz rebuffed those and instead pointed to the rhetoric of groups like the Black Lives Matter movement as an example of how the left could inspire violence. Quote, you want to talk about inflamed rhetoric. Black Lives Matter has been caught. There are protesters on film chanting, pigs in a blanket, fry like bacon. Now that is hateful rhetoric, and I don't see any reporters asking Hillary Clinton when she meets with Black Lives Matter whether she agrees with those sentiments that we should be murdering police officers, unquote. Um, okay. And I'm sure my conservative friends will say, see, that plays into the whole... Uh, liberal media thing. Why aren't uh, why aren't the media asking Hillary Clinton if she agrees that police should be murdered? Well, I can answer that actually. Um, no one's asked her that because I think the obvious answer is no. And even if the answer were yes, even if for some bizarre reason Hillary Clinton did think that it was a good thing to murder police officers. I don't think she would tell us that because I'm pretty sure that would qual uh, disqualify her from ever holding an elected office, including president ever again. <laughs> so this, this is just acid. Oh, well, why doesn't anyone ask Hillary if she thinks it's okay to murder cops? I think we already know the answer. Senator Cruz. Uh, quote, we said the federal criminal laws in this country should be enforced against anybody who violates them. And there shouldn't be a partisan exemption for friends of the Democratic Party like Pr Planned Parenthood, unquote. All right. Whatever, dude. S twisting it all. Um, OK, let's let's. It's, now that I've uh, now that I've offended uh, all my uh, conservative friends with my pithy comments and sarcasm. Let's, uh, let's offend some liberals. We'll do, do this equal opportunity. For those, by the way, because I know we have an ever-expanding audience, let me just take a sip of my caffeinated beverage here because, uh, as I mentioned, well, actually, you didn't hear me mention this on OTRFM because uh, the first 15 minutes I wasn't on. I was only on IPM Nation, but uh, I, I, I am, uh, I've, I've had an exhausting day, and I need my caffeine. I, hang on just a moment. Hmm. Just, just exhausting. 
I am exhausted. Um, okay, so uh, now I will offend the liberals. Oh, what I was going to say is, in case you're new to the show, because I know our audience is ever expanding, I consider myself neither a liberal nor a conservative, which is why I go out of my way to sort of throw eggs at everybody. You know, I'm, an, I'm a non-ideological, practical pragmatist. Um, so, you know, I, I really don't have much use for political ideology. Um, were you to put me in some sort of box, uh, I would probably be most uh, accurately described as a libertarian. Although I can't, I'm not quite ready to fully embrace libertarianism either. And there's reasons for that, but we won't get into that. So, so now, now that we've offended conservatives, let's offend some liberals. Um, uh, on NBC news is reporting that the, uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan university president, Dr. Everett Piper told students, this is not a daycare. (laughs) I love this story. I love that this guy is saying this to these college students. Uh, Alicia Fieldstat wrote, wrote this, a college president in Oklahoma is defiantly standing by his controversial view that today's students are too sensitive and too quick to play the victim card. <laughs> Dr. Everett Piper, the president of Oklahoma Wesleyan University, posted a blog post on the school's website last week saying college students expect too much coddling and declaring this is not a daycare, it's a university. The blog post gained attention in the wake of a growing number of students protesting racial discrimination and other issues on campuses across the country. Piper wrote that he chose to share his frustrations publicly after a student who has not been identified complained about being offended by a sermon given at the Christian Liberal Arts College. Piper said on a local radio program, quote, uh, the, the Pat Campbell Show, that when he heard about the incident, he asked to see a copy of the sermon, thinking he might find something sarcastic or abrasive. In his opinion, the message was innocuous, Campbell said on the radio show. The sermon was on the Bible passage 1 Corinthians 13, which includes the verse, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. The sermon was about love, Piper said. Piper wrote in his post, quote, It appears that this young scholar felt offended because a homily on love made him feel bad for not showing love. I'm not making this up. Our culture has actually taught our kids to be this self-absorbed and narcissistic, unquote. Um, There's more to this, but before we go on, uh, this has been a problem. This isn't just a thing on college campuses, although it seems to manifest itself there quite uh, pervasively. Um, This is something where, uh, this is something conservatives have been talking about for years, and this is something where I agree with them. The childification of our society, where, uh, and and it's, that ties into the whole PC movement. Everything has to be politically incorrect. And um, people uh, have come to believe, and it, it does tend to be younger people, college age people, and so forth, that um, you have a a right n- to never have to be offended or bothered by anything, and that that actually supersedes everyone else's First Amendment right. That you are somehow supposed to be able to go through life without ever hearing anything that bothers you or offends you in any way. Even if the intention is innocuous, even if it's just humor. (laughs) No, you should not ever have to hear anything that bothers you. That's why we have things like trigger warnings and safe spaces. And it's pathetic. And this is not how the real world works. And there is a real severe narcissism Um, that is quite pervasive in this country, and I think it's getting significantly worse in that more and more uh, people believe that all it takes is for one individual's feelings to be hurt, for one person to be bothered by something, and it has to be a huge deal, and everyone has to be sorry about, and you have these social justice warriors who go on Twitter and try to get people fired from their jobs for making a joke that they're personally offended by or whatever. You see this all the time. It's the childification of our country. Everyone thinks that they need to be coddled and protected, and we have to have trigger warnings and safe spaces. And it's sad, and it's pathetic. 
And uh, and look, I'm not some part of me is self conscious saying this because I don't want to come off sounding like some macho idiot because that's not me. If anything, I think I'm a pretty sensitive guy in a lot of ways, but but this is getting ridiculous. Uh, some of this stuff and uh, and these college students who are are so hypersensitive to everything, they are pathetic and they are narcissistic. If you honestly, it's like they think everything revolves around them and their own sensitivities, you know, uh, but you see that. I mean, it's it's narcissism. Um, part of it is the PC thing. Part of it, too, I think, is um, it has to do with social media and other ways. I mean, you know, um, when you look at somebody's Facebook page and they've, they've got a million selfies on it, you know, that to me is narcissism. You know, we, we exist in an era where everyone thinks they're a model. Uh, you know, that started with MySpace and, and it's just incredible with Facebook. And, you know, typically the younger the person is, uh, the more selfies they'll have, uh, <laughs> of, of, well, of themselves, which is redundant. That's what a selfie is, but it's like, Wow, you know, like yourself much? I mean, <laughs> people should like themselves and have good self-esteem, but you know, when I look at somebody's Facebook and there's all there's just a million pictures of literally that of of selfies, it's like, uh yeah, you're not as special as you probably think you are. But no, these college kids, yeah, they all think they're special and they're just well, I, I shouldn't say all, now I'm generalizing. All these all these college kids with their uh their PC nonsense. And, uh, you know, you really they, they think that that supersedes the First Amendment. There was a study. There was a survey that came out recently that showed something like 59 percent of college students surveyed believe that the First Amendment is outdated, outmoded, that you really shouldn't be able to say whatever you want. And it's scary. It, it's really scary stuff. Um, we will finish with the rest of this article because uh, I really love uh ridiculing these uh th- these these college kids who just the the narcissism of this so uh oh uh although in case some of you fall into that category i i should probably take this opportunity to give you a trigger warning that when we come back from break i'm going to continue to ridicule you so this is not a safe space this show <laughs> uh all right We'll be right back. More Unleashed coming up. We're live. Don't go away. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Ohm Times Radio every Wednesday at 6 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of the Inspired Parenting Radio Show, where every week we bring you empowering information from the diverse fields of conscious parenting, education, neuroscience, consciousness, health, and metaphysics to support you in nurturing the best in your children. So if you're interested in understanding what shapes your children's minds, spirits, and hearts, join me every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and prepare to be inspired. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today 
at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Good evening. Welcome back. Matt Connerton Unleashed as we cruise into our final segment. Let's finish with this article, and then I want to remind everybody about what's uh, going on tomorrow. Um, I usually try to just cover one thing within a segment, but today, just tonight just got kind of – things kind of went awry. So um, I do want to finish up, up with this article about uh, – this teacher, at, uh, not teacher, the uh, president at uh, Wesleyan University, um, because I, I really like what he what he said. Uh, OK, so the post, th- this uh, this post that, that uh, he made uh, wasn't meant to be directed at the student who raised the issue. Piper told NBC News, quote, this is not a message to my students per se. This is a message to the broader community, unquote. Piper said he doesn't support, quote, the shouting down of a contrary idea rather than a civil and polite exchange disagreement, unquote, because he believes respectful discourse is a foundation of academia. Quote, a liberal arts academy is about learning. It's not supposed to be a place to suppress uh, controversial ideas, unquote, Uh, Piper said. Uh, My point was to challenge my own industry to look at academic peers in the eye and say, we've caused this. Uh, Piper, who has been the president of Oklahoma Wesleyan since 2002, said in this post that if students, quote, want to be enabled rather than confronted, there are many universities across the land in Missouri and elsewhere that will give you exactly what you want. But Oklahoma Wesleyan isn't one of them, unquote. Well said. Uh, The University of Missouri gained attention last month when racial tensions on campus that students felt weren't being addressed sparked protests and a hunger strike. The school's president, Tim Wolf, resigned amid the turmoil and the activism inspired student protests on campuses across the country, including Yale University and Ithaca College. Piper said on the Pat Campbell show, quote, this has nothing to do about race. This is about the arrogance and the narcissism of our culture. Oklahoma Wesleyan is not a safe place, but rather a place to learn, to learn that life isn't about you, but about others, unquote, Piper wrote in his post which he said uh, has been viewed by more, uh, more than a half million times on the college website since it was posted on November 23rd. Piper said some have disagreed with him, but parents of students at the school of 1700 have been supportive, as have others who work in education. Piper said, quote, I've had faculty across the country say thank you. It was about time someone said this, unquote. Good for him. I agree. I love I, I love that, you know, he says this is about the arrogance and the narcissism of our culture. Very well said. This guy is uh, my hero. And, uh, you know, and again, look, I'm, I'm not I don't want anyone to misunderstand. I'm not saying that uh, students, if they're upset about something, that they shouldn't make it known, that they shouldn't engage in protests or anything like that. I, I, I don't want to be misunderstood. Um, you know, this is. uh during the course of their college education, they should learn about things like speaking up if they're bothered by something and whatnot, but um, learn to, they they need to learn not to be bothered by, I mean, what sparked all this was somebody didn't like something in a speech. Well, I'm sorry, if you don't like the speech, then, you know, you, you have a right to express what you disagree with in the speech, but to, but to say, yeah, I'm offended by the speech, and yeah, I shouldn't have to be offended. Bleah. Well, then, good luck out in the real world after you finish this uh, daycare center that you think you're attending. Because in the real world, once you get out of college, no one gives a crap how offended or sensitive you are. Okay. It's the, 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 you know, the real world is going to eat these kids alive. It really is. Um, you know, and then they can all, they'll, you know, they'll be working at McDonald's and saying they want, they want their, uh, $15 an hour. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, we only have a few minutes left. So before we, we'll, we'll cram in one more thing, but, um, before, uh, 
before we do that, um, I want to remind everybody that tomorrow, if you are listening to this live on Tuesday night, tomorrow, Wednesday, I will be on Ward 13 with John Hopwood at 1 p.m. Eastern. And you can see that uh, from anywhere in the world on IPMNation.com, uh, specifically IPMNation.com slash MPTS. And you can watch the show there. And, of course, immediately following that, you can watch my show, the television edition of Matt Connerton Unleashed, at 2 p.m. Eastern. Perhaps we'll talk, John, into uh, sticking around again. Joe LaChance is going to be on with John, too, so we'll see if, if he wants to stick around. Always a good time. So that will be tomorrow. Uh, let's see. What else have we got uh, before we wrap up? Um, uh, this is interesting. Uh, this is on Politico. Uh, Trump threatens to boycott CNN debate, demands $5 million. Um, the, uh, the, that headline might be a little misleading, but let me read this quickly if you didn't uh, hear this. Maybe we'll end with this tonight. Uh, Donald Trump on Monday night threatened to boycott the next Republican presidential debate unless hosting network CNN donates $5 million to charity. Uh, Trump said at a rally in Georgia, quote, How about I tell CNN, who doesn't treat me properly, I'm not going to do the next debate, okay? How about we do this for CNN? I won't do the debate unless they pay me $5 million, all of which money goes to the wounded warriors or goes to vets, unquote. It's the same move the Republican frontrunner pulled before the GOP debate hosted by CNN in September. Trump sent a letter to CNN President Jeff Zucker asking him to donate all profits from the debate to veterans' charities. Despite not getting an official response from CNN, Trump made it to the debate. It's not clear whether Trump will go as far as he did in September. Soon after issuing his boycott threat, Trump said he didn't know whether he would actually go through with his boycott, especially since CNN would label him a chicken. Uh, quote, so with CNN, here's what they'll say. Trump's chicken, he's afraid to debate, he's afraid to debate, unquote. The CNN hosted debate is on December 15th in Las Vegas. A CNN spokesperson dis- declined to comment. I like how he, um, <laughs> he just, he does this blustery thing, this stunt that he's pulled before, which isn't to help veterans, it's to help himself, it's to make himself look cool, it's to make himself look like, like the cool Donald Trump, the cool character that he is. Oh, what if I just demand this and they'll give it to me? I'm Donald Trump. And then he just turns around and gives himself an out and says, well, of course, if I, you know, it's a game of chicken. And if, if I don't, uh, you know, if, if I don't play ball, uh, they'll say I'm afraid to debate. So he just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like uh, saying to somebody, uh, you know, I'm going to kick your ass. Uh Unless, of course, uh, you kick mine first, and then I guess I won't. <laughs> you know, it's easy to talk tough and then just, you know, say, well, you know, uh, unless uh, this or this. Um, but uh, he's pulled this stunt a couple times before, and, and you know, people fall for it. There's people who fall for everything Trump does, and, you know, any any media coverage that is even remotely negative of him. It just automatically the go-to is, Oh, it's that liberal media again. But I was thinking about it today. And, uh, I, I had a couple of epiphanies. Well, I'll try to share both with you, but we're going to run out of time. So I'll at least get one in one epiphany I had is I need to revise my prediction. I've been predicting, even though understanding that it's very, very early to be making predictions like this. I have been predicting. I solidly believe and I, I'm sticking by the prediction, but I need, a, I need to throw a caveat in here. I, I, I do believe that Hillary Clinton will be the next president. Um, I don't see how Trump can possibly lose the Republican nomination because uh, the conservative base of the party loves the kind of rhetoric that he provides. But I also don't see how, with that same rhetoric, he can possibly win the general election. So I believe that Hillary will be the next president. Again, not because she will have beaten Trump, but because Trump's already beaten himself. He'll he'll be the nominee and he'll lose uh, in uh, in the general election. But I have to throw a caveat in there. Um, there is one thing that could change that and throw the election to Trump. And I don't know why it really didn't occur to me before, but um, uh, we are talking about the Clintons. And where there are Clintons, there is scandal. And, you know... Um, I mean, you, uh, some might say, well, you know, Benghazi is going to hurt her in the general election. But, you know, uh, the, the, the public only has uh, so much uh, patience with, 
you know, the, the same. I, I mean, by the time we get to the general election, unless there's some new shocking revelation in Benghazi, you know, the, the, the electorate really probably will will be past it. And, and that's not don't I don't want anyone to misunderstand. I'm not defending her on that. I'm just saying, you know, these scandals can only drag on for so long before people are just are just, you know, there's a there's a fatigue that sets in. But we are talking about the Clintons. So who's to say, because because we are talking about the Clintons, it wouldn't be a huge surprise. Who's to say there's not another scandal lurking? Who's to say there won't be an October surprise uh, or even a November surprise uh, for the Clintons that would throw the election to Trump? That is a real possibility because of who we're talking about here. And it's something I hadn't really considered before. So I'm I'm revising my prediction slightly in saying that I yes, I, I'm still predicting a Hillary Clinton victory uh for uh November 2016, but with the caveat that um there is one thing, one thing that could change that. Um and even then, I don't know. It, it'd have to be something pretty bad. So that that's the uh, the first uh, epiphany that I had today in thinking about all this. Um, the other epiphany uh, I'm not going to share with you right now because we're about out of time. So I'll tell you what. You can watch the television edition of Matt Connerton Unleashed tomorrow, and I will share the other epiphany I had today about Trump. Or uh, if you would rather just listen, uh, you can listen on IPM Nation 1 uh, at uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow. 2 p.m. Eastern on IPM Nation. You can watch it at ipmnation.com slash mpts right after Ward 13 with John Hopwood, or, of course, you can listen on IPM Nation 1. And um, we'll uh, we'll continue the conversation there. And, of course, you know, we'll be back live with the radio edition uh, Thursday night right here on OTR-FM as well as uh, IPM Nation. But we are out of time for now. So thank you all for joining me. Stay safe out there. Talk at you later. Good night.